Okay, we're copper obsessed. People in the garden want to use copper for nearly everything, whether it's electroculture to fertilizers, you name it. In this video, I'm going to give you four ways to use copper in the garden. Two of them, very real and backed by science. Two of them, not so much, and maybe some internet sleuthing going on. Okay, welcome to another windy day in the garden because Chicago might be windy, but it's not nearly as windy as Saskatchewan. Okay, first bizarre one that has been going around the internet is actually taking copper and piercing it through the stem of your tomato plant. The idea here is that it's supposed to help prevent against, against pests. It's also sort of supposed to help with vitality of the tomato plant etc and so forth. Now of course the level of truth in that is zero so no stabbing tomato plants with copper is not going to help it whether it's for pesticide reduction or even just fertilizer like uptake of copper. Plants don't need that much so sticking a whole piece of like copper wire through a tomato plant there's no benefit to it. Copper trick number two is actually using copper sheeting. Uh, it could be a chain mail like this, or it could be a sheet in and of itself, and placing it around the base of your plant, or making a wall around the plant to prevent against both slugs and snails. This is fact. This is fact. So using this actually does help prevent slugs and snails. However, the general consensus is that it needs to be a minimum of six inches of travel distance to the plant, meaning this either has to be laid around the base of the plants that are affected with a six inch width in which these snails and slugs have to travel across to help to truly deter them. Because if it's just skinny, they'll put up with the pain just to get to the gain of eating your pasta. Okay, next up we have electroculture, it has to be said. I did a whole video on this. It's kind, people really didn't like the video. I shouldn't say that. My viewers like the video, just random people on the internet finding it, they don't think it's ideal. So, electroculture is something that has various different forms in which it could work. So there's electrically charged electroculture, meaning there's an outside source of electricity applied. And that was actually the article that was written by WEF, um, World Economic Forum, discussing this. It was done in conjunction, I think, with the Chinese government, or just, sorry, Chinese university. It's, it's all the same thing, right? Um, so it was done in conjunction with them, and they said there you know, was decreases in fertilizer needs, there was increases in yields, decreases in pests, etc. and so forth. So they said based off their studies that it works wonders when it's charged, like actually physically given our electricity applied to it with either a, a low voltage battery, etc. and so forth. Now what I learned after that video is most gardeners are not using the charged version, they're using the antenna version of electroculture, which essentially is an antenna either like a coiled copper uh, design that's meant to capture ambient electrical electricity because like your air is ch your air is charged it has molecules etc and so forth so the idea is to capture that and then pull it into the soil so if you were to do this as your own garden scientist and you want to experiment which i highly i heavily encourage that i would rather you try something and determine on your own it does not work i do not like it then take my word for it or any other youtube influencer article you name it even if it's written by a professor go and try it and see if you like it bottom line with anything that's said on the internet so if you wanted to do this you would make the antenna which would have it has to be a specific tr structure so general consensus is a spiral is best that would need to be up above uh, the plant higher than the canopy so if you were doing this with tomatoes for example it had to be eight feet for indeterminate and then you would want to force it into the soil into the actual root system so the copper has to go from the soil in the soil quite deep you know two three inches and then up above the plant itself so that's how you would do it I'm not gonna say it works because there isn't much in my mind to suggest it works. And the people who said it does work have provided no evidence that it does despite saying that they studied it and it does. If that makes sense, 
I'm not gonna lean on it. So next one is actually one of my favorites and that is the use of copper to fight fungi. Yes, that's right. So whether it's powdery mildew or something else, fungi can be killed with copper. A lot of bacteria also can be killed with copper because it is like an anti -cell. Now with this being said, you could technically cheat when it comes to copper and use it as a foliar application that is typically intended to be used as a fungus. Copper used as a fungicide can be microdosed, if you will, on the leaves as a foliar spray rapid growth. So if you do it with house plants, you'll see really nice luscious green growth. If you do it with outdoor plants, you'll see very similar results to that. Now what I will say is you can overdo it with copper and that is why foliar application is better than an in-ground fertilizer application because overdosing is incredibly easy to do. Hence why shoving a piece of copper through a tomato plant is less than ideal. So definitely consider using copper for pest prevention, particular fungicide, and then also just a light application once a month on your actual plants as a foliar spray, whether that be for your house plants or outdoor plants. So that is my four ways to use copper in the garden. Two are real, two in my opinion are fake. You have to let me know in the comments down below how you use copper in your garden. There is also copper uh, aesthetics you can add to your garden which help with the prevention of slugs and snails that actually look really pretty so like spherical balls and like these like round disc things I don't I think they're gorgeous that's another way to use copper that's effective and harmless to your plants I'll talk to you guys next time bye